The latest food inflation forecast is out, and it's not encouraging. The United Nations says global food prices could rise 4.4 percent to a record by the end of the year. Stockpiles of corn, beef, edible oil, and grains are shrinking. So how is that going to affect consumer and retail earnings? Jenny Montgomery Scott, David Strasser is here with us. He's one of the most accurate forecasters when it comes to BJ's, Walmart, and Costco. So, David, we keep talking about the consumer walking off the higher price of gasoline and food, at least up till now. What's happening to the companies that sell the products? Um, well, the companies, the vendors, I mean, you saw Kimberly Clark yesterday on the paper side, uh, Coca-Cola today. Um, it's starting to really impact their businesses. You're seeing some very selected price increases flow through to the consumer right now. But, I, but you're going to start to see more of that as prices really start to rise right now. And uh, it, we're going to really understand, the consumer is really going to start feeling it, I think, in, from here going forward. Uh, it's starting to really flow into the stores, the impact that they're going to feel. And that is going to mean what? We talk so often about the grains, but just yesterday the USDA, and I know you were paying a lot of attention to their forecast on the proteins. I mean, yes. the, we're not talking about the extras. We're talking about the right. basic food stuffs yeah. at this point. Well, I, what they were saying, we did a conference call with them at Janney uh, for clients, and one of the things that came across is that the proteins, the meats, the and, and dairy and you know milk, uh, that seems like a much more sustainable um, increase. Some of the some of the other products could be some weather-related stuff. It seems a little bit more transitory, although time will tell tell that. But that was their take on it. That's that the sort of more of those like the corn and so on there's weather elements of that that could reverse you know this year we're starting to plant you know for for corn actually this year in the u.s um so so that that's hopeful but the protein part seems like it's a much more sustainable trend and that's the real worry because you have people on both sides of this debate saying it matters how long that right. spike lasts but when you're looking at retail earnings and you make this point in your latest report the ticket the comp the amount of sales being up or down is skewed by the amount that people are paying at the register. So in other words, are we getting a false read? Well, we're going to start to see that probably more aggressively. You're seeing it help a little bit right now. They'll talk about, you know, a couple of basis points, maybe a percent, somewhere in that range at, at the Costco's or the BJ's potentially. But um, but it's going to probably, the comps are going to go higher. The question is, does it does it make up for that higher price point? And that's, and it's always a challenge. I mean, the retailers, every you know, the, the vendors take a piece of it, the retailers take a piece of it, and the consumer's going to take a piece of it. And the more it goes higher, you know, the more everybody has to kind of take their share. We saw it in 08. You know, what you're seeing, the PPI number, which came out earlier this week, was, was significantly higher than the CPI, which is really the consumer indicator. Part of that could be differences in the basket, but part of it is it still needs to flow through to that consumer. And we'll see when the retailers come out with their actual earnings, so some yes. of the details on this. But who do you expect to win? I mean, is it really Walmart deciding how much you and I are going to pay at the register? <laughs> uh, and they'd like to think that. I mean, I mean, Walmart's going to be a price leader. Costco's going to be a price leader. Um, you know, those those two are probably determining a lot of instances how much, where pricing is going to go. Um, you know, in the near term, probably everybody can get a little bit of a benefit. They're able to raise prices. If they can maintain that margin on the way up, they get some more gross profit dollars out of it. But then it comes down to, at some point, does Walmart or does Costco or some of the, you know, or who decides, you know what, we're going to give up some of that gross margin to give, to drive traffic into the store. And it just changes the competitive dynamic as we get through the year. And it's interesting because grocery has made up more and more of a part of some of those low-end retailers, uh, of the amount they're trying to sell, right? Right. So it's going to mean that much more for them if, if this is where the area of sensitivity yeah, and, is. Yeah, and that's where, the, that's where the consumer has the least amount of disposable income, right? You know, even the confidence numbers we were just talking about early, before we went on, 35,000 and under, that number was down today on a, in an up consumer confidence number. Though, I mean, some of those guys are going to get hit. You know, they're, they're, they're the most vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, it's that bifurcated, it's that divide. It's a, it's a big divide going on in this country. It's so bifurcated right now. All right, David, thank you so much.